もうダメだ全ての対策のもうです今じゃない大事か信じられないみ,みんなこれは最近救援救援じゃないの東海村の地獄の最悪だったものだみんな連れ出せ君に任せるわそして話したように世界最強のエンジニアチームをまとめ世界のエネルギー問題を解決せよ地球を守るために逃げろ逃げろ This is what we need to do. The challenge is to design, build, and test a wind turbine that rotates clockwise when viewing from the wind direction, does not exceed 3,000 rpm angular velocity, total mass not exceeding 400 grams, self-starts at 10 meter per second wind, maximum CP should be at TSR between 3 and 8, and maximum diameter should not exceed 400 millimeters. The design process includes considering the tip speed ratio, cross section shape, airfoil, cord length, twist angle for maximum power output extracted from the wind. We found that we should design the blade to be as long as possible. We also needed a high lift to drag ratio for the selected airfoil. Furthermore, a relatively thicker airfoil was preferred from a structural point of view. Comparing several airfoils, we ultimately chose S36043 as our airfoil. Working on the assumption that the weight loss number was 100,000. As the tangential velocity varies at different radii, we needed to define pitch angles beta so as to keep the blade at its optimum angle of attack of about 8 degrees. To define pitch angles, we managed to determine the difference between the angle of relative wind and the optimum angle of attack. We have a choice between Betts and Schmidt's formula to define pitch angle and chord length. However, the best formula does not include the rotation of the wick induced by the rotation of the plate. Since the rotation of the wick follows conservation of angular momentum, we decided to use the Schmidt formula, which has the axial and tangential induction factors and thus a more detailed and sophisticated model of flow. Using Q-Blade, we simulated the performance for different TSRs. We found that the maximum power coefficient occurred when the TSR is 5 for a two-bladed design. To evaluate the structure and integrity of our turbine, we considered the aerodynamic forces and centrifugal forces present. The effects of shear, torsion and the surf weight of our turbine were neglected as these were small in comparison. First we needed to confirm the maximum stresses from the combination of these forces was below the tensile failure stress of the ABS plastic material being used. We also needed to confirm that the deflection of our blade was reasonable, primarily to ensure that the optimum aerodynamic shape was not altered substantially. The centrifugal forces were calculated using MATLAB by discretizing the equations detailed in the lectures. The blade was divided into 47 sections and all of the dimensions of our blade were entered from x -Fall. The centrifugal forces were calculated at each section by summing the total centrifugal forces from the tip inwards that were acting on each section. The stresses induced by the aerodynamic forces were calculated using a discretized form of engineer's theory of bending idealizing the blade as a cantilever beam with varying cross-sectional area, again using MATLAB. It is clear that the maximum stress as a result of the moments produced will occur at the furthest distance from the neutral axis and on the tension side, as this will be summed to the positive tension force induced by the centrifugal forces. Comparing these maximum stress points along the blade, we found that they were much less than the failure stress of our material. For the calculations of the tip deflection, we used a discretized version of the virtual work method. The tip deflection was found to be small enough to deflect given the time constraints of the project. Ideally, the blade could be pre-bended to offset the deflection's effect of um, deforming the tip from operating at its optimum angle of attack. We want to nose cone that is aerodynamically shaped and lightweight. Theory has shown that the hack series nose cone design is mathematically derived to minimize drag. However, at low max speeds that we are testing the turbine at, a parabola section would just be less effective. The maximum radius of the nose cone is 45mm and it has a hollow interior with a pattern complementary to the hub. The hub is made of aluminium and weighs 25 grams. Features include two protruding structures on a ring, which is primarily designed for nose slippage during rotations and the reduction of percentage volume of aluminium in the wind turbine. 
It also has a keyway compatible with BS4235555P 5 and a 4mm hole for the grub screw to secure the wind turbine at the testing facility. The aluminium hub was made using the following steps. We started off with a cylinder of aluminium. Using a center lathe, we faced off the excess unwanted material and ensured that we had the correct diameter. A tailstock was used to machine a 16mm diameter hole for the test rig and a CNC milling machine was used where we pre-programmed a path that follows the cross-sectional shape of the protruding structures. We finally broached the keyway using a hydraulic pump. Before the wind tunnel testing, the actual mass of the blade was measured and found to be 120 grams, which is only 9 grams above the predicted weight. Then, during the test, it occurred that our wind turbine could not self-start, even at speeds higher than 12 meters per second. This unfortunately resulted from the imposed size of the turbine, which had a diameter restricted to 400 millimeters. Additionally, following the testing of the turbine, it was possible to calculate its maximum power coefficient CP, as well as the tip speed ratio at which it is delivered. The results obtained are displayed in the following table. It can be seen that at a wind velocity of 12 meters per second, the maximum CP achieved was 0.1392, and that it occurred at a TSR of 3.7531. It appears that the actual maximum CP is 9% lower than the one predicted using Hue blade simulation and that the TSR is 24% lower than its predicted value of 5. These differences between the real-life testing and the Hue blade model arise due to various factors which were neglected by the software simulation. Indeed, the use of 3D printing and sanding led to small distortions of the initial blade design and to imperfections on the surface of the blade. Furthermore, the presence of tip deflection along with flow separation at the blade tips and wake losses affected the performance of the turbine. Additionally, other phenomena such as blockage effects and friction in the generator caused further performance losses. The testing of the turbine also allowed us to plot the power generated as a function of the angular velocity. It is clear that the maximum power output was obtained by running the turbine at the edge of stall which can be seen on the plots by the fact that the curve greatly decreases once its apex has been reached. In addition, the presence of resonance can be observed and has been circled on the plots. Although in our case the effects of resonance were mitigated as they did not happen in the region of maximum power output, this phenomenon still has to be avoided. Indeed, it is a source of instability for the turbine and can lead to its failure. Moreover, when a resonance mode can, was reached, it was observed that the turbine produced a lot of noise. In real-world applications, this noise pollution is a great concern and has to be prevented. There are several improvements that can be made to enhance our performance. Obviously, a further mass reduction can make a huge enhancement of the performance. This can be achieved by replacing the solid blade to the following in integral design, while the structural strength can be maintained. Also, alternative design of the nose cone and the hop can be considered for mass reduction. Furthermore, a thick root section of the blade should be removed as it includes a substantial amount of track. However, this means the cross section of the root might need to be reconsidered and further analyzed such as finite element using Creo must be conducted to check the blade's structural integrity. Although according to our calculation, only small deflection would be displaced at tip. Prevent the blade to encounter deflection might also show improvement as well, so the designed ideal angle of attack could be kept under testing. Also, a further study of mean tip design and 3D flow can be conducted to enhance its performance as well. Moreover, the design TSR could be slightly de decreased, as the TSR at max CP is 1.2 higher than what was decided. This might have a significant impact on the performance since TSR is one of the vital factors in this meets formula that we have used. Despite that there are few improvements that can be made, our team believes that it's a good wind turbine design, since the best CP and the substantial high power output of 22 watts were achieved at around the desired RPM 3000. Also, the blade was able to run under 6.5 meters per second, which indicates the CD of this design is relatively low.